One of the most fun things about working at a university is watching the success of graduates once they leave campus. Today's guest combined his love for weather and his passion for skiing into a career. Joel Gratz grew up in Doylestown, spent his childhood winters at Shawnee Mountain, and raced with the Penn State ski team. He's the founding meteorologist and CEO of Open Snow. Joel, welcome and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Joel, when you graduated in 2003, you got a bachelor's in meteorology and then you went to the University of Colorado at Boulder. Why did you go there and what did you study? Oh, I went there to ski. No, well, only kind of. Um, I, I studied uh, environmental studies. I got a master's in environmental studies, which was uh, mainly a focus on kind of public policy as it relates to meteorology. Uh, what do we do with all this weather data? Um, who are we helping? How can we organize the weather enterprise um, even better? And then I also um, got an MBA. So I studied business and I, I got a business minor um, at Penn State and, and kept going because my dream was to somehow um, combine meteorology and, uh, and business. And so I got both of those degrees at CU somehow in between uh, a lot of skiing uh, and playing in the mountains. So how did that lead you to starting your own business? Well, I, uh, as an only child, uh, I, I, I guess by definition, I'm a little selfish. And so uh, when it comes to skiing, uh, I, I was skiing and I discovered that there's so much fresh snow uh, in Colorado called powder uh, for skiers. And there's over 300 inches of snow usually that falls on most mountains, some years, a lot more. And I became addicted um, to powder. And so uh, powder though is uh, perishable. Right? If you're not there in the morning, right when it snows or right after it snows, it uh, gets tracked up and it's gone. So it's really important uh, to forecast powder correctly at the right time in the right spot so you're there uh, when the snow is best. And I missed some forecasts when I first moved out here. I found that other sources for forecasts uh, weren't as accurate as maybe they could be uh, because they just weren't focused on the mountains. And so uh, coming back to that selfishness, I was scratching my own itch and uh, started teaching myself how to better forecast powder. Started to share that with friends and family and that was the genesis for uh, this business that is Open Snow, which is telling people where and when to go find the best snow. So this business, is it geared towards individuals? Is it geared towards ski resorts? How, who subscribes to this service? Yeah, mostly individuals, although we do work with uh, ski areas and lodging properties, mostly on an advertising basis, but our main clients are um, individuals are people that are skiers, are snowboarders, and they are trying to time their next trip. Is Saturday night uh, snowfall going to make Sunday morning the best powder day? Uh, should they take a day off of work on Friday uh, to go skiing, you know, instead of uh, going to the office? And, and so our clients are um, individuals that are just as, as, uh, just as obsessed uh, with powder as, as I am. And, you know, coming from the East Coast, a lot of people think about snow from a negative standpoint. It impacts uh, your daily routine, but especially out west and for skiers, uh, snow is a wonderful, wonderful celebrated thing. Now, I'm one of those people who enjoys snow, and I, I do know a couple of others. So for those of us here on the East Coast, do you only forecast for Colorado or where do you forecast for? Yeah, so we, we have our forecasts for uh, hundreds of ski areas all across the country. Um, many more in Canada and then ski areas in Japan. Yes, some of the best skiing is actually in Japan uh, in terms of powder skiing um, and also ski areas throughout the Alps um, and in Europe. So we do uh, forecast for all those areas. And we also have um, beyond just kind of the automated data-based forecast, we have something called a, a daily snow. So it's a discussion uh, that's a part weather geek, part snow geek, part ski geek, um, basically to answer the question, where and when is going to be the best snow? Um, and so we have local forecasters all over the United States and Southern Canada uh, that write um, daily uh, discussions around that. And so we do have a, a forecaster in New England. We have a forecaster in the Mid-Atlantic uh, who just started with us. And uh, we also have a handful of forecasters on the West Coast in total about 10 forecasters and I'm one of them. Um, so I am uh, forecasting the snow in Colorado every day um, and it's something that, uh, that I love to do. And even though I have to wake up very early as many meteorologists have to do uh, to get that forecast out in time, um, it's something that I love to do and I'll always do. So you just mentioned how many forecasters you have. Is there anybody else involved in the company or is it strictly forecasters? Oh no, there's a, yeah, there's a whole team of folks. So we have six full-time people, about half technology, about half operations. Uh, we have a team of uh, roughly 10 or a little bit more sometimes forecasters. 
And then we've been working with a couple um, uh, meteorological, meteorological scientists to help us with some of our data processing. So at any given time, we might have about 15 contractors and about six full-time folks. So uh, it's a, it's a, sometimes when I, when I think about it, it's like, man, that's, that's a lot of people to manage. But the reality is it's easy because we're all motivated um, by the same thing, uh, finding great snow. And so everybody works pretty independently. We are totally remote. Uh, even before COVID, we you know, had no home office. We all worked from home, uh, which basically meant we worked from home so that when there was a big powder day, uh, we could go out and ski. So now you're talking about a winter b uh, business. What do you do in the off season? Yeah, so for a while I slept um, in the summer because running the business all winter was so tiring that I just needed some time off. Um, but the last couple of years, we started a summer product called Open Summit. Um, and Open Snow and Open Summit are both um, iPhone and Android apps as well as available on opensnow.com and opensummit.com. So we started Open Summit uh, to answer the question, where can I go hiking and biking in the higher mountains um, during the summer without threat of lightning, precipitation, things like that. So um, it was basically the same audience that we were working with in, uh, in the winter, but we just all transfer over to summer sports like climbing, hiking, and, um, and biking. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, I only have a few seconds left. Can you just yep. quickly tell us about Open Snow's carbon removal commitment? Yeah, it's something that we wanted to participate in with our payment processor Stripe, and they're investing in new technology to try to remove carbon from the atmosphere. So we are dedicating 1% of our subscription sales uh, to that effort. And it's, a lot of it's R&D. Hey, can we remove carbon from the atmosphere in a price effective way? And maybe the answer is no, but maybe the answer is yes. And uh, we're loving to be a part of it. Well, Joel, I'm sad to have to say goodbye to you right now. Thank you so much for taking the time to discuss your business with us today. And it's great to see you. And I appreciate you joining us, especially since it's your busy season. And uh, we'll be back in a moment with more.